and welcome to episode 70 of the Lonely Knitter podcast. My name is Laura and welcome to my knit night. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're new here, hi, welcome to the madness. Uh, this is where I come to chat about my knitting and other crafts. Um, trying used to be weekly basis. Um, life has got in the way and things have really got a lot less weekly. Um, but this is where I come to chat about that sort of thing and I am from the most easterly point of England in the UK and I live here with my husband, my four-year-old daughter, my one-year-old son and our, we think, 12-year-old cat. <laughs> um, and yeah, I run my own business um you can find me below and all my stuff um you can find me as the lonely knitter on instagram and i write knitting patterns i make hand balm called crafters balm i dye yarn i make little bits and bobs and they're all for sale on my website and that is my full-time job right now <laughs> um so yeah you can find me in all the places below and yeah, if you're not new here, then hiya! <laughs> um, I'm back. We have foes, we have hoes, we have whips and stash enhancement this week, but it's all like bits and bobs, um, nothing huge in any section. So I will crack on without further ado. Uh, first of all, I can't believe we've got to episode 70. Second of all, definitely haven't sorted my lighting. Look at the shadows, awful lighting my children are in bed it is gone eight o'clock at night this is the only time I have where I am child free and recording a podcast with a four and a one year old tootling around would not be ideal so I have come out here to my studio studio is what I'd like to call it in reality we call it the garage room because <laughs> we are cool <laughs> uh, studio sounds so classy it's not it's the garage room um, but we're out here and the lighting is awful. I have no makeup on. I am so sorry. Let's begin. So finished objects. First thing I finished this week is these socks and I do have blockers hanging around, but if I put one, oh, here we go. Here's a blocker. I have one in reach. I only have one in reach though. The other one is up there on the wall and it's very high up and I don't want to stretch up and get it. So I'm just going to show one. They're the same anyway. It's a pair. These socks, I actually wore them yesterday, so they're a little baggy. I am going to put them away in a box of socks um, because I want to do a box of socks, but I got so excited because I haven't finished a sock in so long that they had to go on my feet. So there are two. And this is my self-striping club yarn. So this is in Bumbling Yarns, my hand-dyed yarn. If you bought any of my hand-dyed sock yarn last year, uh, this is a different base. I started with this in January. It is a lot smoother, it's a lot softer, and I like it a lot more. And I am phasing out the old sock yarn base. And they are a bit stretched out because they've been on my big size seven clompers. Um, but yeah, this is self-striping sock club. Um, that I started running for this year and there is six colorways coming out throughout the year they're each available for two months or until my slots run out so you still have time to join in if you would like to get the first colorway because it is available until the end of February so it's got about a week left we're on what the 21st now so yeah there's a week left to order this or if slots run out I've got a few slots left but honestly there is only so much I can do um, around my children and I can't do an unlimited amount and as soon as February is finished I will be selling the next colour, the next one. They'll all be a natural and then something else um, because I love that and I thought that could be a good idea for the, for the club for this year. So my first pair are done so I'm going to keep up with my own club hopefully and I've entered these into um, my friends knit along my lovely friend Sharon of the SCR1 TNO podcast is doing a stripey sock knit along for the year and um I've popped these in and I'm actually the featured dyer for one of her months well, I'm the you know the one of the um one of the double entry dyers for one of the months so head over and join in and if you have one of my colorways you can 
put it in once for this month or if you happen to finish one in my month which I can't remember it, when it is but it's like the middle of the year you can enter it twice if it's a month with that's mine so yeah pair of those done very happy with them very 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 happy with them and they're lovely and soft I'm very happy with they are um, uh, my next finished object is a big one I dug this out because it really didn't need much more to be done on it um it was the size I wanted it to be and it's been sat in a cupboard for a couple of years I started working on this on my Hindu. I think it was the weekend before my Hindu. because I am a wild partier obviously <laughs> um I um took a crochet project on my Hindu, and it was this blanket and it was the coastal crochet blanket and I was really excited to join in I was um miles behind when she started it it was it would have probably been for 2018 the, the one for 2018 and it probably started at the beginning of the year and I didn't join in until like September but I was going back through all of her Instagram posts and doing the the weekly um things after the fact the, the weekly directions and I just had a blast with it and then it got to the point where I was like should I stop or should I finish and do all of her directions but it was for Ellie's bed and I really thought it was big enough so this is where I started and it's going backwards and forwards like this so that's where I started that's the bottom and then should I show you like that I'll show you like this so it's got I mean I'm not a crocheter I'm a knitter who does some crochet so I have to refresh my memory on crochet stitches every single time I do a crochet project because otherwise I know I'll get it wrong and I didn't know any of these most well no I knew a few of them but again would have had to have a refresh um but it was really nice to have such easy instructions and such a back I mean this is a couple of years ago now for most of these but the instructions were so good that as a inexperienced crochet I was able to join in with everything so yeah it was the coastal crochet 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 along for a few years ago and yeah there's lots of different stitches there's some normal granny stripe stitches um bobbles and some of these seashells and some waves and then yeah just there's some is that basket weave stuff that i didn't know you could do with crochet because i didn't have any experience of it so it is quite big and that's where I finished. Um, so I got it back out of the cupboard and finished the last uh, row because the last row had come become unraveled because it had been sat there without a stitch marker in it because I'm not clever. Um, so I finished that last row off and then I put a pink border around it. Now, bearing in mind that I am not an experienced crocheter, had never crocheted a blanket before this point, and didn't know what I was doing I didn't put a stitch marker at the end of each row and each row is very higgledy piggledy and there are lots of bits like this where we suddenly get quite a bit wider um my four-year-old doesn't care look at that woohoo that is quite a wavy edge <laughs> my four-year-old does not care in fact when I pointed out to her that mummy was not the best crocheter um her response was it's so perfect mummy so I if she doesn't mind then I definitely don't mind and it is it's not hugely wide it's about my wingspan actually it's about my wingspan and then lengthwise it is longer than my wingspan um but it will go back on her bed she had it on her bed straight away she absolutely adored it um but I pinched it back and she was actually not very happy to go to bed without it tonight um but she I traded her and let her take one of my other blankets and she did let me borrow it so that was finished so those are my two finished objects I have a hoe oops no I can't find it here we go so I mentioned the SCR1 TNO knitting project podcast um knit along for stripy socks well February's dyer or one of the dyers because she she's got commercial dyers and hand dyers for every month for those double entries so you don't have to have that hand dyer you could get a potentially more easily accessible um commercial dyer so for february it's opal um i'm sure i have some opal somewhere but i did specifically buy this back in january so that i could join in with this colorway uh, with this dyer and this is woolly goodness so the lovely woolly goodness yarns um check them out on instagram uh just beautiful yarn and um 
I bought this. It's an MCN. So here we go. I've got one sock. So we have a home. Um, the main colour is Fruit Pastels in her self-striping. And it is a merino cashmere nylon. So it's an extra bit soft and it's a little bit lovely. Um, but the yarn for the contrast, which I decided I don't, I'm not bothered about having contrast cuffs. I just like it on my heels and toes. Can I just point out that that's brilliant? Because earlier I told Chris that I was using a different, that people often use different yarns for keels, hose and tufts. And he looked at me for a minute like, <laughs> but yeah. So on my heels and my toes, I have used the contrast that she put with the, with the 100 grams. And that is just merino nylon. So merino nylon is a little bit extra sturdy, not as soft, like fluffy. This is very, could peel quite easily, but I love it anyway. It's perfectly fine. Um, this is a little bit extra, extra sturdy. So I have one and I knit the, um, I knit a pattern onto these ones. This is my sock pattern, the Ness Point Socks. Um, it's available on Ravelry and I am going to put it onto my website. So at the moment, every time I write a new pattern and um, finish all the work on it and get it eventually uploaded, it goes onto Ravelry and my own website because I do understand that some people can't use Ravelry and I am looking at other sites to pick another one to put it onto as well. Um, totally respect people not being able to use Ravelry um but I haven't yet had time or a chance to go through and upload my back catalogue of patterns that sounds like I have loads I've got like 12 <laughs> um onto my website but I will do it at some point so this is the nest point socks I'm just going to show you the pattern front on so that's just down the front the back of the sock and obviously the underneath of the sock are all just plain knit and I love this pattern for self-striping socks I think it's really effective really sort of shows up but it's also incredibly simple um and I love it because I mainly have socks for mindless knitting. And when you get a pattern, you then have to think about them more. Well, on this one, half of every row, the back half or the bottom of the sock is just plain knit. And every other row is just plain knit. So there is only something to do that's different on half a row, every other row. <laughs> and uh, on one of those, it's just pearl bumps. <laughs> so it's, it's incredibly simple. So I have one done. And I am on to my second one. And I am particularly, I feel like my mojo, my knitting mojo has come back because I've been a little slow over the last month uh, or so while I've been ill. Um, if you watched last podcast, I went into it all then. And um, uh, just not really having any, any energy for anything. But uh, it's Sunday night and I cast these on Friday afternoon. <laughs> So Friday, I think I got as far as here. And then uh, by last night, yeah, Saturday night, I just cast off this. Before I went to bed, I knit the cuff. And then today, I've got lots of my hair in it as usual. Today, I've done the leg, the heel flap and gusset, and now I'm plowing on down the leg. And um, they will, they started off matching. Um, and then they stopped matching here. See, it's like one stroke was slightly bigger than on there. And now we're slightly off. I don't care. I don't care. I'm just going to do the right amount of bumps to match down the front of this sock. And that will be fine. So that's my current work in progress. I need to finish these before the end of February to be able to add them in for the extra entry. Because this is February's sock for the knit along, for Sharon's knit along. This is February's um dire so I need to finish them by the end of the month can't see a problem considering considering it's taken me two days to do this much I just need to keep the momentum and get like this much left this how much left on the second sock so that's my only whip that I'm like currently really smashing through I have worked on a couple of other things I've mainly worked on some blankets so Finishing that other crochet blanket gave me a little bit of mojo and while I was on a Zoom call last weekend with some lovely people, I ploughed through a little bit of this. I did, I actually only did like two and a half. I finished, I did this mini and that was like one and a half rows of my granny stripe blanket and then I started to put in this pink one and that's gone about halfway across the blanket so i did like two rows overall and this is my granny stripe crochet blanket 
that I started a very, very long time ago with all of the minis that I had got in Advent. Not this year, just been the one before. Um, and I am adding onto it. I even, I think I have minis from the year before that even in there. Um, so I need to really take this in the house and get working on it properly and put a bit of time in it every day. But I also obviously have a Battenberg blanket that I think I talked about previously. So really I need to prioritize and put some time aside maybe every day for both blankets. I don't know, we shall see. Um, but I do love this and I really do want it actually worked on. Um, and it's probably about a third of the way done because I didn't make it massively wide. It's about my wingspan. So if I make it really ridiculously long, then it'll be like a weird strip, long strip. Um, so yeah, I reckon I'm about a third done for how I want it to be. Maybe even coming up to a half because it's not very wide. We'll see. And then I think I need to... I need to, no, I need to stop for a little while and work on some of the other things, the other whips. that I have like a wall of whips right there that need to get worked on. So there's another blanket in the house, the habitation throw. There's the batten blur blanket. I have put a few stitches on that. I also put a few stitches on this. Oh, um, because after I'd put that mini in, I wanted a little change. And this is just knitting around and around while it is helical. But this is my understated by Hohilo Catelli that hasn't come out in like a year. So I just put a couple of rows on that. And this is in the colorway forager dk from lay family yarn my chris bought me this i think for my birthday last year and it is i have the shoulders and we're joined for the body it's just round and round and round and round and then eventually we'll get onto sleeves but that's not coming in the house it's just sitting there i've got other things that need going on now i'm going to go on to something a little bit weird this is not a whip this is a gift that i received from my grandma so I went and stood in my grandma's garden. <laughs> she was not in the garden, she was in the house. Um, I do some cleaning for them sometimes, um, but we haven't been doing it because um, of the virus, because we are in lockdown here in the UK and they need a bit of extra help. And um, yeah, I went down to drop some stuff off and she gave me this. Um, this is a blanket that my granddad's mum, so my great grandma, knit all of the squares. Um, and it had perished a little bit, so it's very old. Um, I can't remember when, I don't, I don't know how old it was. Like, she made her kids' clothes out of all acrylic yarns. Um, I oh wonder, no, there might be some, that might be, there might well be some wool in here, because, but I'm not sure, but it's quite a lot of it, it's quite scratchy, but I don't care, it's, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, this blanket, my great-grandma made it, and she had it edged, she'd edged it with silk, with a, a silk edging, and apparently when my dad had it when he was little, he used to rub his hands on it, fingers on it, and, um, and it's all put together, she's used a herringbone stitch in quite a lot of places, all hand stitched. So hand knit, moss stitch squares, and then she's hand stitched it together with a herringbone stitch. And it's gorgeous. And it's all the leftovers from all of the clothes that she made for her family and for other people and all the knitting she did. Every time she had a leftover piece of yarn, she, if she had enough to make it into a square, she made a square. So, um, and there is, there is some that are slightly patchworky squares as well. So yeah, she put all of her little bits into squares and then she herringbone stitched this blanket together and edged it with a silk edging. The silk edging had perished. Um, I think my grandma said that some moths had got into it as well, but also my dad used to rub his finger alongside of it and it was falling apart. And she'd also, my grandma had also found some old squares. She had some old squares that were with it that, uh, or that she'd put with it, that were also from my great grandma, um, but had never made it onto the blanket and my grandma had saved them. So she, my grandma attached them all. My grandma attached them all with a straight stitch. Um, I think she said it was a straight stitch, let me see if I can find, yeah. So these ones are stitched on by my grandma and she has just stitched them on. So my grandma stitched on an extra, I think she did an extra row that way and an extra row that way as well. She stitched on 
and an extra row that way as well. So she stitched, stitched on quite a few extra squares and then she went round the outside of the blanket and put a blanket stitch all the way around the outside. So that's, you know, a sewn blanket stitch with acrylic. So this is all acrylic and it's very old um, and it has had a little refurb by my grandma. My grandma's in her 80s. It was, well, my, my granddad's still with us as well. So my grandma and granddad are in their 80s and it was my granddad's mum who made it, um, you know, old enough for them to have it when my dad was a little boy and my dad's in his 50s. So I have a pretty precious thing here and I knew she was refurbing it because she told me about it previously and what she was doing and I'd said how lovely that was and then she gave it to me which I didn't expect um but I am ridiculously grateful for I have just received my first ever heirlo heirloom from someone else this is an this is a family heirloom and it's knitted so I'm ridiculously happy about it um yeah and it's it's quite big it is bigger than my wingspan because I'm not holding the edges so it's a few squares over my wingspan that way and it is about it's about my wingspan the other way um and yeah all the squares it's all acrylic but it's not the cushy oh look at these ones it's not the soft as acrylic because it would be whatever they had back then and and I I love it I love it I love it and I love every little bit of it I love these bits that are because this is her original herringbone stitch along here and these little bits that are fluffing out the back I'm literally I'm literally in love I feel like I I can't believe it I can't believe I have I didn't know this blanket existed before my grandma started telling me about it and about refurbing it and now I have this amazing blanket um that is a true family heirloom yeah I'm gonna stop going on about my blanket now but I'm very happy with my new blanket <laughs> um and I will keep it safe and I love it I can't believe I've got something so special anyway Stash enhancement. So that's sort of stash enhancement. It's not really. It's a gift. It's not stash, but it's a knitted thing, so it's relevant. But other than that, stash enhancement. I have one thing. I um, swapped with, or I am doing a swap. My lovely friend Helen of Giddy Arms. Um, she knew that I wanted some of her self striping, and she didn't have any in her shop at that point because lockdown. She's got kids. She has an amazing shop anyway, if you fancy some other, of her other stuff. But she is going to be one of the dyers in the upcoming months for Sharon's Knit Along. And I really, really wanted some of her self-striping so that I could join in for that month for the double entry. Because that's what I'm going to try and do, is get hold of the of an indie dyer's yarn for each one of the months and um, do the double entry thing. And that's my gift to myself each month will be that I buy from or I get a yarn from an indie dyer um, to join in the Knit Along. Uh, so she doesn't have um, stripes in her shop right now, I don't think, but obviously stay tuned, you never know. But you can also enter with scrappy socks. And so she often does mini sets. So um, check out her website if you would like to join in and want to do what I'm doing. You can grab a mini set and make some scrappy socks that way and make them stripy. But yeah, this colorway, um, she very kindly offered to trade with me. So some point in the future, Helen, see one tell me you want it and it's yours instantly I promise but this is the colorway frosted and it's a 75 25 there's 425 meters per 100 grams and oh my gosh is it not the most beautiful colors that is going to make some stunning socks and yeah giddy yarns on instagram and her website um yeah beautiful so that's my stash enhancement for this week on to shop news, I did an update last week. There is still some bits and bobs hanging about. I still have quite a few of my mini skeins that are pretty much the only thing I've dyed this year other than clubs. Um, I'm waiting on a yarn order now and then hopefully there'll be more coming up. But with lockdown draining us all and having two small children, I'm not sure how much I am gonna get done very soon. Um, I ended up putting these necklaces, my my embroidered necklaces that I made into the update and um, I sold a couple and I put on my, um, I put on my Instagram stories that if no one bought a particular one of them, I was going to have to keep it for myself because I loved it and this was the day after Valentine's Day 
and it's this one and you would think that because i am wearing it it's it i just love this one so i embroidered them and then set them into these necklaces and um i put four up two of them sold then this one went to me you'd think i pinched it for myself i didn't i'm going to tell you a story and there is one left which actually i thought was going to be one of the really popular ones and um it didn't go so it's still in there if anyone's interested um this one so put up that i would like to steal it from my shop so if no one had bought it that day then i was going to pinch it and then a customer a lovely customer someone bought it and i was like oh well there we go it's gone and i thought that was it and then a couple of days later when i was packing up those orders i went to write the shipping label i got all the stuff out went to write the shipping label out and in the shipping label it didn't say an address it said happy valentine's day and then it said at the lonely knitter <laughs> um so yeah i emailed that lovely lovely customer and she had gifted it to me from my own website and i was so touched i i i did have a cry i had quite an ugly cry i'm not going to cry now because i am a really ugly crier but i really like these necklaces they're really long that's one of the things that bugs me the most about necklaces is i've got quite a big neck and when things are up there like even if they would be like here on most people they're normally like here on me and an unflattering length i love a good long length you could easily take link links out of it if you wanted to it does have a lobster glass at the back but um it's nice and long it doesn't go with this t-shirt i am wearing my skein austin skein head t-shirt <laughs> um but i'm wearing it every day whether or not it goes with what i'm wearing because i feel like i need a little bit of a reminder of how lovely the world is right now so i'm gonna go on to life stuff um i'm gonna just put a trigger warning here anyone um i'm gonna talk about i'm gonna talk about what's gone on this week not a lot has but one of the things i'm gonna talk about is uh like um cancer um and breast cancer in particular and I don't want anyone to feel triggered by that so you know if that's something that you really can't deal with I totally understand this might be where you want to log off so this week let's just get on to it this week I felt a lump in my boob uh, this happened about three and a half years ago to me in the other boob and I went to the doctors they referred me to the hospital I went to the breast screening clinic they did an ultrasound on my boob which I didn't think was going to be an ultrasound they also squished my boobs in this thing mm -hmm. um <laughs> it was really weird um and uh it was a fatty lump and nothing to worry about just a bit of fat because I have fatty boobs and that was the end of it um I am sure that will be what it is again but in my family especially, we're very cautious. My mum had breast cancer in her 40s. And um, it's actually 10 years ago since she got her diagnosis. Just over 10 years. 10 years and like six days <laughs> since she got her diagnosis. She um, had a lot of, she, she found one lump. And then when they had a proper look, she had a lot of lumps. And she had a double mastectomy. And now she's absolutely fine and um, has a cracking new set. Um, <laughs> um, and, you know, we're perfectly all fine um but it does always make me wary i do check regularly the type of cancer that my mum had type of breast cancer my mum had is not the genetic kind so it's not you know doesn't put me at higher risk at all and i am very sure that i will go to the doctors again and it will be fine so i felt this lump on the tuesday wednesday wednesday night uh, or wednesday afternoon um thought I could possibly feel a second one near it but wasn't sure and um I put in an online request for my GP so you can ask for an online appointment like you can ask online for an appointment now so I put in an online request I put that it wasn't urgent could be seen within seven days because it's not like I'm falling apart it's not like you know um it, yeah I didn't think it was that urgent but I got um an email at nine o'clock the next morning to say we've booked you in for 12 20 today so Thursday lunchtime, I was in with the doctor, uh, with, with the nurse actually. Uh, she got me to take my top off. That was a little bit unnerving. So if you're ever going through this, this is what to expect. <laughs> she got me to take my top off. I was like, I don't need to take my bra off because it's up here so you can feel it without um, me having taken it off. She's like, no, no, top half off. So there I am, knockers out. 
and uh, the first thing she did was kneel down on the floor in front of me and look up at them and uh, and I was like she was like pretty much the same I was like I oh, know there's one bigger than other than the other isn't there always <laughs> um so uh she was like yeah no, that's normal <laughs> um came up gave a squidge found the one she went there it is I went no no that's the other one that I thought might be a lump but couldn't really find it up here was the other one so she had a bit more of a squidge round she went there it is I was like no and she's like oh well there's one there um and then went up to the other one so um she thinks she found three lumps even after loads of squidging afterwards I could only find two but she thinks she found three um so she sat me down had a little chat said it's likely to be fatty lumps again um you know don't worry about it but anyone who has a lump in their chest and obviously it can be men as well as women um they do this two week suspected cancer pathway referral uh so basically you get referred to the local hospital which is like two minutes up the road that way for me and you just get you you get seen within two weeks so i was like wow that's that's speedy but it does have this big explaining bit on the refer referral letter she printed me a referral letter that just said that she, i had been referred um and then that it was you know if you're referred under the two week suspected cancer referral system um not to worry it is usually nothing but they like to check it really fast to stop you worrying long term and to stop um if it is anything serious to stop it progressing like get in there quick um so that was on the thursday lunchtime friday morning the next morning at nine o'clock or about five past nine in the morning i got a phone call from the hospital from the breast or no it wasn't it's was from um appointment booking but to go to breast screening on the 4th of March so in like 13 days from then <laughs> so I mean if you are worrying about it and think it's gonna if you've got one you've got a lump of any kind and you think it's gonna take ages if your county if your area does the same system as mine oh my gosh sweet speediest thing in the world um felt it one night was seen by the nurse the next day next morning called by the hospital and booked in for within two weeks so um i'll let you know how it goes i'm really not worried um because i've been through it before about three and a half years ago and it was a fatty lump and it doesn't feel dissimilar from that much um i am very hopeful that that's what it'll be again but i'm more saying it because first of all i don't like keeping secrets i'm not a secretive person um, I can't keep a secret. Um, I keep other people's secrets, but my own, I'm like, might as well share. Um, <laughs> but um, also because if you're in that situation and you're scared, um, you're not alone. And please check your knockers because, you know, if my mum hadn't checked hers and then really pushed to get seen at the doctors. And at that point it was, she had to really push. Um, she actually went private in the end to get them to check it because her doctor couldn't find it, which she does not blame them for. But, you know... If you're worried, you're not alone in this. And I am very happy to share my experience, but please check your chest, men as well as women. Give yourself a little squidge when you're in the shower. <laughs> Just check that there's no lumps. Um, and if there is, just get checked because probably nothing, but just in case. I've got little kids, I'd rather not um, peg it young if I don't have to <laughs> I'm only 30 <laughs> I say only 30 god not that long ago 30 was like old lady I was like god when I'm 30 now I'm 30 and I'm like I'm young still <laughs> anyway oh rambling now yeah this week this week's not been too bad Chris was back at work this week he'd had a couple of weeks off before that but he was back at work this week um so me and the kids not too bad not at all really I didn't have they didn't go to nannies so I didn't have much because I didn't I didn't have any childcare so when was he back at work this week he was back at work on Friday and from now he's back so Monday and Tuesday I've got childcare this week coming which is nice so but yeah I, I, that's just put a bit of a down on everything I'm really genuinely not worried I'm not worried, but there's like this niggling little thing in the back of my head that's like thinking, you know, I'm not worried. 
and there's nothing I can do to speed any of this up and I'm sure it will be fine. I've just been thinking about it a bit. I don't need any reassurance. I don't need anyone else to worry about me. I just need you all to check yourselves because that would make me feel good. Um, and I need the 4th of March to roll around nice and speedily so that I can get this out of my brain. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I am going to finish my Woolly Goodness socks. I am going to hunt through the wall of whips for another pair of socks that need to be finished off because I know there is socks up there somewhere and I'm on a little finishing kick. I'm on a little mojo kick and I would like to cast on my Desert Vista Dye Work socks which are March's sock yarn for the SCR1 TNO knit along. I have a, I have a skein that I bought in a D stash that's been in my stash for forever but I love it and I'm like, it's my one skein of Desert Vista Dye Works. Um, because obviously it costs quite a bit to get it imported. Like you, you get it, you have to pay shipping because it comes from America. And then you'll also get stung for customs because you always do. So yeah, it's pretty precious. It's been sat here for a while. So I need to get that out and knit that. But I'm going to cast it on in March. You can cast on beforehand because whips are allowed. But I'm going to try and do them in each month and I'm going to pick a box, one of my old boxes, to be my box of socks. I'm not going to buy a new box this year. I'm going to use one of my old ones to be my box of socks for this year. And I'm going to put my stripy ones in there and any others I do as well. So I'm going to take some more socks in with me, uh, half done whips, so that when this pair is finished, I can crack on and hopefully have another finished object for you when I come and see you next. And um, hopefully that will be next weekend. Fingers crossed, I will do my best. Um, I think that was everything. Can't think of anything else. We're at 36, nearly 37 minutes, so I think that was probably time. Yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> um, but thank you so much if you have joined me. Um, the little community that I have around here is lovely and I love you guys. And I will see you all next time. Thank you so much, as always, for making me so much less of a lonely knitter. <laughs>